Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi, and today I am walking on this amazing beach here in Phuket, Thailand, talking about Bitcoin, blockchain, and life, of course, guys. Yes, in today's video, I have three amazing charts, really interesting charts to see with Bitcoin, a trading tip, a travel tip, of course, some live advice, and talking about the news because there was a very interesting question from some of the followers that was related to the news, guys. So let's quickly jump into the first part of the video, the charts, to show you what they have to say about Bitcoin. Where are we going to go 44k or back down below the 40k level? Let's see what the charts have to tell us. Bam! The first chart for the day, guys, is again that four hour chart. Like I told you yesterday, buy signal was building. We did close a candle above the yellow stepping line. And yes, we are in profit with that trade at the moment. Um, we should try to break that 40k level and then take it up all the way here, 4600 and maybe in the far future, let's see where the resistance is. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see that better, guys. Um, then we will see that around here at 41k level again, a lot of volume. So that would be the target, the top of the Bollinger Band 41k for this trade to take profit. But let's zoom out and look at more interesting charts now for you guys to get that Zen feeling that you want to have in this part of the bull cycle. This is the first chart, guys. This is a chart that shows you all the drawdowns in Bitcoin history. We can see on the top, you know, those, those dripping lines, that, that are orange, red, blue, green, black. These are the drawdowns. Every time when they peak down, that's a drawdown in Bitcoin. So that correction that we see at the moment of around 20% from 49K to 39K, that is just a very small drawdown. At the moment, the max drawdown of 2023 was 20%. Look, in the previous bull markets, we had even bigger drawdowns of 50%, 38%, 23%. You can see the drawdowns exactly in this chart, guys. So these drawdowns are part of a bull market. We can't only go up in one straight candle, one straight line. That's not possible. We always go up have a correction, go up again and have another correction, go up again and have another correction, etc, etc, etc. In 2016, 17, we did this six times. In 2020, 21, we did it about four times. So every bull cycle has these drawdowns. That's what the chart is showing you. Don't freak out. Just understand it is part of a massive run to above 100K. Then we have this chart. We can see that the halving is going to take place in around 80 days. Now we can also see what happened every bull cycle around 80 days before the halving. The first time, 80 days before the halving, we dropped with 62% in 2016. The second time in 2020, before the halving, we dropped with 52%. That was at 14k COVID crash. I think it should have been a smaller crash around like 30%, but you know, who am I? Now in 2024, how big will this crash be? Will this crash be 40% because we had 60, 50 and now 40? Or will it just be a 30 or a 20% crash? That is now the question because we are 80 days before the halving and we started to see a 20% crash. Will we crash another 20%? I don't believe it. I believe that 30K is a massive area of support. So that 31K level for me is the deepest we could crash with Bitcoin at the moment. But as you have seen already now, 38K was also massive area of support and we bounce already back above that 40K level now. If we can break that 41K level, we will continue again upwards. We won't crash more. If we do break the 38K level, yes, then I expect 34 or 31K. But this chart is just showing you that also every bull cycle, in the beginning of that massive bull market, we had these huge crashes that forced the weak hands to sell their Bitcoins to the strong hands. Then we have this chart. The red line in the middle is the 100 simple moving average. We all know where that purple hand is. The question is now, how are we going to interact with that 100 simple moving average? If you look to the left, you can see that that line was resistant a lot of time. And that left side, the blue part more of the line. We can also see that that line turned into support there at the A. 
Then we broke it a little bit again, came above it. So we can see that that 100 simple moving average is a very important line. Now the question is, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna break it and fall back to that 34K level? That is that B scenario, the yellow line. Or are we gonna find support now at a 38K and bounce up from here and follow that green line? These are the exact two options I see as well on the chart. Or we bounce around the 100 simple moving average back all the way up to 61k in my house opinion or we fall down below it to the 34k we go sideways for one or two months before we break above that 100 simple moving average again and then go to 60k but the thing that i want you to understand now is either scenario will lead up to a higher price so yes you can be freaking out now that we drop a little bit more to 34k for example or that we are not bouncing as fast as you want. But at the end, it will be the same. At the end of 2024, we will have broken the previous all-time high of 69K. I really believe in 2024, we will break that 70K level, guys. So scenario A, B, C, D, Z, I really don't care. I zoom out and I know that we are in the beginning of a massive bull run all the way up into 2025 that will lead to a Bitcoin price above 100k. That's my only focus for now. I hope you really enjoyed the charts guys. Yes, it's all about zooming out, looking at that bigger picture. It's of course amazing to stress about the short term volatility. But like I said in yesterday's video, the only thing that you need to do at these moments is buy the dip. That's why that expression is there. Because when the Bitcoin market crashes with 20%, between 20 and 30%, you should be buying the dip. That is how you dollar cost average into these amazing prices, still below 40K, before we go again into a massive run in Bitcoin. Before you know it, we bounce back to 40K, 50K, and maybe even 60K, and you're still doubting. So the only thing that you do in these crashes is not freak out, zoom out, and buy the dip. Now, let's quickly jump now into the trading dip. The trading tip for today, guys, is talking about another cool project I will be investing in. It's called Commonwealth. I've been already talking about Commonwealth for over a year. I told you guys this is going to be a very exciting project in the next bull market. And the community now starts to grow tremendously on X and all other social media platforms. And why? Because Commonwealth is a project that will make it possible for the normal people to invest in startups as well. In those startups that I am investing as well because I'm an influencer and an OG, I get these allocations in startups a little bit more early than other people get. Now, that same thing is now gonna happen as well for you guys out there because of Commonwealth. The website is joincommonwealth.xyz. Uh, you will find it down below in the link. Check this project out. It is a really cool project. I already bought the Generation 1 and Generation 2 NFTs like a year ago. I also shared with you guys at that moment, I am buying these Commonwealth NFTs. And those NFTs give you access to the complete Commonwealth community and also to all those early investment opportunities. So you just need to buy a Generation 1 or Generation 2 um, on Rarible, for example, and then you get access to those investment opportunities. If you stake those NFTs, you are even earning rewards now all the way up to the TGE, guys. But because there is no TGE of the token yet, that still needs to happen. You're still very early if you accumulate now uh, Generation 1 or Generation 2 NFT. Join Commonwealth. Really cool. Um, they also call it All Street instead of Wall Street. Wall Street only for that 1% rich people. All Street is for everyone out there. It's a really cool project and I'm not a financial advisor, I know this, but I am just sharing with you guys what I have been doing already for the last one and a half year. I told you back then, I'm buying these NFTs. These NFTs are now at a very nice price for you to buy again as well. So if you want to invest in a new kind of project, check joincommonwealth.xyz. Now, let's jump into the travel tip. The travel tip today is about Thailand. When you visit Thailand, you will need to understand that you always need to haggle about the price of clothes or, for example, shoes or like other products. Not about the food. The food is priced in pretty damn cheap well. Don't haggle about food. 
they do their ultimate best to create very fresh, healthy food for you guys. So don't haggle about the food price, but haggle about t-shirts, shorts, shoes. They will always ask you too much money. I always do the same. I always offer them one third of the price that they are asking. And then mostly we end up at 50% of the price that they are asking. Sometimes when it really is overpriced, I will even offer 25% of the price that they are asking and then end up at 30% of the price you're asking. Yeah, that's how much they top up the prices, guys. And then they will ask you, hey, give you 600 baht for that Bob Marley shirt. And then you will be answering, nah, I think it's 100 baht. <laughs> and at the end, you come around 200 baht and then you have a shirt for five bucks. You're happy, he's happy, and you all had a fun game in haggling about the price. Again, don't do it in restaurants about food. Some restaurants nowadays do 10% service charge. Yeah, I would always say from the beginning, hey, I will only pay service charge if the service is okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit weird in that. I don't want to pay service charge if I'm not happy with the service. So uh, standard service charge doesn't uh, work for me. But haggling about food, no. Haggling about products, shirts, and everything else, yes, of course, do that. That was the travel tip for today. As there was no news today, guys, I'm gonna answer two questions of two different followers. One question was, it was not like a question, it was more like a remark. He was saying, Bitcoin is not gonna exist anymore in the future. It's gonna be gone. All of you that are investing now will go bankrupt and lose everything you have. Now, to that person, I wanna say, you really don't understand what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin can't be deleted from the future. How do you want to delete Bitcoin from the future? Even if there is just one computer up and running somewhere in the world with the Bitcoin blockchain, Bitcoin won't be deleted. In the far future, I don't think we even need a computer anymore to have the Bitcoin blockchain up and running. There's these very small, technically advanced boxes or chips even that will run the complete entire Bitcoin blockchain. And maybe the whole Bitcoin blockchain will fit on a chip that will fit in a watch or fit in a bracelet or will fit in a body. We don't know yet, but the, the, the one thing that I know for sure is you can't delete Bitcoin as long people believe in Bitcoin. It's impossible because the technology is too advanced for people to be able to delete it like that. It's a distributed ledger which means the Bitcoin blockchain is running on millions of computers or maybe entities, I should say, worldwide. Maybe your fridge in the future can even run the Bitcoin blockchain. As long as these Bitcoin blockchains are saved on one of these entities, maybe even on a satellite, whatever it is, it will be up and running. It's impossible to lead the Bitcoin blockchain. Yes, it is possible to disrupt the belief in Bitcoin. But that will maybe take another 100 years as every product has its life cycle. And I believe, yes, Bitcoin also has that life cycle. But I don't believe that will end soon. We are just in the beginning of the adoption curve, around 3 to 5%. We will need to peak massively out and then come down again. Just like the life cycle of everything that we uh, saw in life. You know, yes newspapers were very popular then they peaked out and now they're dropping down because we have online media bitcoin will do that same cycle but i believe that cycle will take 30 to 50 years we are just in the beginning we are now around 2024 around like the 14th year so this is going to take a very long time but well, there is a law that says if a product exists for 14 years already it will take another 14 years before that product will end so the longer Bitcoin will exist, and we are just getting started with adoption by institutional investors and governments, the longer it will stay here. Bitcoin is not going away. Don't be afraid when people comment that thing or when family tells you at a dinner, you know, oh, but I think it will stop existing. It's not possible. As long as you have, for example, the blockchain on a computer at your home, it can't stop existing. It's still there. And from there, it can again be duplicated to other computers. It is a distributed ledger that's unstoppable, guys. Let that be clear. That was the first question. Now let's jump into the second question. The second question is probably the most asked question ever to me or my family. And the question is, should I sell my house now? 
and I'm going to give you a very clear answer on this. First of all, I think that Bitcoin will always outperform real estate. So by having all my capital in Bitcoin, I believe my capital is outperforming the capital if it would be in a real estate, in a house. 300k in a house won't give me the return on investment that 300k in Bitcoin will give me in the next 10, 20 years. So I believe more in Bitcoin when it comes to long-term investment than I believe in real estate. Now the second tip, if you want to do what we did, the all-in step into Bitcoin, your timing needs to be perfect. That's why already two years ago, I told my brother and sister to sell their house. That was before the bear market. That was around the bull market of Bitcoin. We first saw Bitcoin dropping down again. I told them now is the time to sell your house because it can take up to a year before your house is sold. And then when that house is sold, you will need your time to dollar cost average into that bear market bottom price. And that's exactly what they did. They put their house for sale two years ago when we were in Mexico. And yes, we have the proof of that. It's all recorded in our documentary. So you will see it soon. Beginning of April, it's gonna go live. But the timing is selling it near that top, taking the time to sell it. When it's sold, keep your money till the bear market bottom bottoms out and then buy it. That doesn't mean that you can't sell your house now and buy Bitcoin at the moment because maybe your house is being sold in two weeks time. So for example, if you believe that Bitcoin can still dip to 31K or 34K at the moment and you can sell your house in two weeks, probably the money will be in your bank in one month, would be after Chinese New Year in February. That's probably if we dip where we would dip around Chinese New Year then yes, of course, you can still buy Bitcoin at a cheap price around 30, 40K. If you need to buy Bitcoin around 50K, I would still have the guts to do it. But I'm a risky investor because I believe that we go to 100K. So why would I keep my money in a house that's not doubling in price in the next year while I could have it in Bitcoin as I believe it will double in price, even if it's 50K? So for me, yes, I would always go all in because I'm not afraid to lose money because I always have the skill to build up capital again. I will find a job or I'll find a new business or I'll do something to earn money again. It's very simple. Do you believe that Bitcoin is going to go to 100K? Then everything below 100K is a nice price to buy Bitcoin because you can take profit at 100K. So if your house is sold right now at the moment, and you're waiting for the money to come in, then do dollar cost average into Bitcoin with that money. Buy a little bit at 40K or 38K or maybe 34K or maybe even a 50K because we will go to 70K, break that all time high, maybe to 100K and you will be able to double your capital in the next 12 to 16 months. Doubling your capital in the next 12 to 16 months, tell me one other asset that can do that for you guys. That's almost impossible for any other asset in the world. So if you are asking me, Didi, should I really sell my house at the moment and buy Bitcoin? I would always say yes. Because one, I believe Bitcoin will always be out of form in real estate. And two, I believe we are just in the beginning of a massive bull market that is starting and it's ending in 2025 when there will be the possibility to take profits. And yes, I think we could really double your capital from this moment on. So that's two reasons why I say yes to going all into Bitcoin at the moment after selling your house. So that was the answer to the questions. Let's jump into the next part of the video, guys. The next part of the video is the last part, is the live advice, guys. And today's quote is, guys, a problem is an opportunity for you to do your best. That's all it is. Whenever you run into a problem in life, it's an opportunity for you to do your ultimate best. If you handle any problem in life like that, you will solve those issues and problems with a positive outcome because you give your ultimate best. And whenever you give your ultimate best, you will be able to solve a problem. Of course, you cannot create wonders, you cannot create life out of death, but all other things in life are solvable. You can always solve it. You just need to be creative determined and you just need to go for it and do your ultimate best in solving that problem. 
So don't see these problems again as something really negative. Like I said yesterday, you should stop focusing on the negative part and focusing on joy. See those problems as an opportunity for you to do your ultimate best. And then when you have done your ultimate best and you still didn't succeed in solving the problem, okay, you can always look in the mirror and tell yourself, I did my best. But at least you tried to solve that problem. And mostly that problem will be solved because just look into the past. Has there been any problem you were not able to solve? What things in life happened to you that you were not able to solve? It's not that many things. Of course, there's always things like, you know, my parents dying. I can't solve that. But the emotions that I experienced because my parents died, yes, I got to live with that and I solved my issues with that and I continued life. It was for me an opportunity to do my ultimate best to show that I'm a strong person for my wife and my children. And I did. I succeeded. So I really believe that whatever problem there is in life, you can always solve it if you just do your ultimate best. That was the end of the video, guys. Yes, that was a very short live advice, but I need to keep the video a little bit short because I need to go do my Muay Thai training now. Edit this video first, Muay Thai training. Don't tell me I'm not working really hard. I was up at six this morning, at seven here on the beach, filming, now I'm going home, editing the video, putting it live on YouTube, Muay Thai training class, coming back and answering all your questions again. So yes, I have a job nowadays, but I really love my job. I'm addicted to creating this content for you. I'm doing my ultimate best to create beautiful content every time and again and again and again for you. But if you have any tips or advice about things that you want me to talk about, let me know down below in the comment. I want to thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing day. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, to share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, and to hit the notification bell. And yes, that sharing is very important because we need to reach more followers, guys. It's just my goal for 2024, 100K followers minimum, guys. Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing day. See you tomorrow again. Bam.